Hi, everybody. Beth Holland here from EdTech Teacher. Thanks so much for joining us this evening. Um, I am super psyched tonight to be joined by Kim Avelti. Kim and I go way back. We were actually grad school colleagues together in 2001 and 2002, although we just dated ourselves a lot, Kim. Um, but we're really excited tonight to talk to you about the idea of using OneNote in a blended learning environment. So that's going to be our big picture topic. And if you are, you know, using OneNote or you're thinking about it, this is great. And if you're not, another great feature is really to think about the capabilities that Kim and I are talking about to see how it might work uh, with your students and in your classrooms. So I'm going to turn it over to Kim for a second and let her introduce herself, um, and then we will jump right in. So Kim, go ahead and tell everyone hi. All right, thanks a lot, Beth. Um, so Kimberly Zerna Velti, I'm the Associate Academic Dean at the Williston Northampton School, which is located in East Hampton, Massachusetts. Uh, we're a boarding school, we're grades seven through PG. Um, and we are actually in an environment where we are one-to-one -one with Microsoft Services. And I've been working in academic technology at the school for about four years. Cool. Thanks, Kim. And, you know, I think in a lot of ways, I'll, I'll totally admit, I didn't jump on the OneNote bandwagon until I went out to visit Kim. And this was about a year ago when we were talking about things and I knew that Kim was in an opportunity where they were one-to-one -one Surface tablets and I thought to myself, I don't know anybody who is one-to-one -one with Surface tablets. I want to see what this is about. And so it was in going to visit Kim and to learn about what they were doing and how she was working with her faculty. And what I was really amazed with was how they had embraced OneNote as a tool to really delve into blended learning and to extend the potential of the classroom and to really open up the collaborative potential for in their classroom, how are students working together, how are they engaging in problem solving, you know, how are they doing all of those really great, like, you know, high demand cognitive tasks that you really want them to be able to do because by using OneNote, they had removed a lot of the technical limitations. Um, so our plan for tonight is this. I'm going to give you a little bit of a OneNote overview. And Kim and I decided we would split this up because in some ways I'm still a OneNote newbie. And so I can give it to you from a little bit of a perspective of someone just getting used to it. You know, I'm using it more for myself, um, but I'm also a student right now uh, working on my doctorate. And OneNote has been an amazing student tool. So I'm going to walk you through a little bit of the idea from a student perspective. And then I'm going to turn it over to Kim and we're going to do some live demos and she's going to explain it from a teacher's perspective and show us some of the things that you can do with it uh, in terms of working with your students. So that's a little bit of the breakdown and Kim's going to jump in at any point in time if I screw something up or she has something to add or she has a better way of doing something uh, and we'll go from there. So I'm just going to share my screen uh, in order to, you know, walk through a couple of things. So, you know, just the first thing as well to know that in terms of working with OneNote is OneNote's available on all platforms. And, you know, I have to say I had used OneNote just on my iPad before, and I'm actually a Mac user. Um, and Kim's going to be able to show it to us from the Windows side of life. Uh, but, you know, I had used it on my iPad. I had used it a little bit on my Mac. And what I didn't realize the real power was when I started to use it across devices because everything automatically syncs. So I can have my OneNote open on my iPad, I can have it open on my Mac, I could have it open on my phone if I wanted to, and all of my notes are suddenly everywhere with me. And I think that's one of those really powerful things, especially if you happen to be in a school that's BYOD, and you're looking for, you know, what's one of those platforms that you could use that would work with all of your students across all of their devices? You know, but another feature that's great because it uses an account, much like using a Google Drive account, if you have shared devices, students could actually log in and out of the OneNote app and be able to access all their notes. So maybe you have, you know, shared laptops or shared iPads or even shared Chromebooks. You know, there is a, uh, a OneNote online version that works there as well. But it really gives you this opportunity. And, you know, what sets OneNote apart, I think, a little bit from some of the other note-taking tools like Evernote, and I use Evernote as well, um, is really the organizational piece. So I just realized I shared the wrong screen with you, so let me stop this one more time. And I will now share, I'm going to share my OneNote with you so you can actually see what it looks like. 
And I'm going to give you one note on um, Mac, and hopefully you're looking at this. Hey, Cam, are you looking at my one note? Give me like a thumbs up or something. Hopefully. You're still there, Cam. Um, I'll hit this button just in case. So hopefully you are now looking um, you know, at my OneNote. Yay, okay, great. Um, that you're looking at my OneNote notebook. And the first thing to think about is just the way that it's organized. Um, and you know, OneNote has like a multi-tiered structure. So you're actually looking right now at my personal student notebook. And the first thing is you'll see up here it says fall and it says orientation. So these are called section groups. So it's kind of like being able to organize, you know, like the idea of like folders inside of folders or notebooks inside of notebooks. So I can put like sections inside section groups. So if I open up my fall section group, um, you'll notice that I have different sections up here. So these are the different sections. You know, I have one section for each class. And then I created another section because I had just a really big project that stretched across all of my classes. Um, so I have my section group and then my sections, which allows me to get really organized. But then if you look over on the side, I can then use what they call pages and even sub pages. So I can really organize all of my notes. And each page is not like your standard like Word document or Google document page where you run out of room. Like it just scrolls on forever. Um, but it allows me to organize it. So like down here, this was session three. You can see I'm reading really exciting things. But I was able to break down into these different subsections, sub pages, just to organize all of my information. Um, and within each page, I can then do a number of things. I can have as much, you know, I can type my notes. Um, you can see here that I'm actually handwriting my notes. And, you know, I've, it turns out I'm a huge fan of handwriting notes. There's like a connection from my hand to my brain. And OneNote gives you this great option of being able to type and handwrite all at the same time. Um, I can highlight different things. Um, I tended to use different bits of text um, as ways to delineate like what was I talking about in different things, but also knowing that, you know, I have this great search feature up here and it's searching all of my text. So if I thought it was something that I might want to search for, I typed that in. Um, but as I scroll down, eventually what I did want to show you is that you can even, here it is, like you could have screen captures. So maybe you wanted to add a picture and then draw on top of a picture. So with OneNote, I can add in, I can have text, I could have pictures. Um, another great feature is I could insert a PDF document. So maybe it's something where, you know, if a professor had given me, you know, all of their lecture notes in a, as a PDF file or even as a PowerPoint type file, if I insert it as this PDF printout right here, it would allow me to, you know, to draw on top of it and to, or to type on top of it with text boxes. And so I can basically start building everything I might possibly need in one place. And so it's, a, it's across all of my devices. It allows me to type and add text. I can add files. Um, you know, Kim and I were talking briefly at the, you know, before we came online about the ability to add attachments. So if I complete a paper or I complete assignments, I can actually attach them to my notes so I have everything in one big, giant, centralized space. And while I may be talking a lot right now, I don't actually like to hear myself talk, but I do have an option as well that I could include audio recording. So maybe I'm that kind of person that would want to talk into their notebook and then be able to play it back. You know, I know for some students that I've worked with, we talk about you know, maybe they want to record audio as a pre-writing activity. You know, those kids that can talk to think, you know, OneNote includes that option where you could speak directly into it. And I know Kim's going to show you some examples or talk to them. Um, when I visited some of her um, colleagues, like a foreign language teacher, they were talking into their notebook as a way of capturing audio recordings. So, you know, lots of different features uh, for how I could set her actually taking my notes. And, you know, I have to say one of the great things, again, is that everything is in the cloud. Um, you know, my hard drive on a different computer died a couple weeks ago, and it was fun. Like, I didn't have to panic because I knew all of my notes were automatically backed up in the cloud. 
So, you know, big picture, you know, OneNote allows you to basically create this giant searchable database of your brain. You know, I have one notebook and because of all of these different ways to organize, I'll be able to keep that one notebook and just keep adding and adding and adding to it so that ultimately I'm building like this big giant database of everything that I've learned, you know, over my time as being a student. So at a, at a super high level, you know, that's really where, you know, OneNote can be of a huge benefit to your students. Uh, I'm going to switch back over here so I can say hello again. And, you know, we were lately, um, I've been talking to a lot of teachers who've been searching for a system where they said, you know, my students have, you know, they have their their Google Docs or they have their OneDrive documents and those are in one place. They've got notes somewhere else. Like, how do they bring everything together? And that's where I keep thinking, well, this is where you need this note taking platform. You know, this one place where everything can have a central home. So, you know, we're looking at OneNote tonight, which is a great option. There are other options, like you could have substituted the word OneNote with Evernote and had it, it would have been slightly different. But again, that idea that everything can be centralized and brought into one place where you've got all of your learning that you can take over. So I have not yet had the chance to use this with students. And so I'm really excited to have Kim here who can talk about what this looks like now when you extend it to a one-to-one -one environment, because I'm using it as just the one. So this is me using it in my environment, um, you know, as a student and starting to look at it as a way of supporting, you know, myself as a learner and for my own organization. But I am going to be quiet now and hand this over to Kim and let her tell you the story about how they're using it within, you know, their broader one-to-one -one environment. So Kim, I'm going to let you take it away. All right. Thank you, Beth. So I'll go back to the slides for just a little bit to organize the beginning of the conversation here. Um, so as I said at the beginning of the talk, um, I'm, here, I'm at the Wilson of Hamden School, and a few years ago we did go one-to-one. -one. Sorry, just, am, I, am I okay? Sorry, Kim, you try sharing one more time. Or if you want, I can play Vanna White and actually share for you. No, let me try again. Okay, if not, I can share for you. All right. Um, right now, I just see a, nope, you're still there. Here, let me try. I'll share the screens and you tell me when to advance it. How's that? All right, thank you. Okay, no, that's all right. And... So we'll go to, how's this? That's perfect, thank you. All right, great. So, so cool. All right, so at Wilson, um, when I first got here, I was actually, I had been a OneNote user for quite a long time. So um, I've been using OneNote as an organizational tool, like much like Beth, as an individual and as a teacher, um, since maybe 2006. Uh, so for me, it was, it was absolutely indispensable as a math teacher um, because the perspective that I had on it was that many of my humanities colleagues or those that were in more text-based fields, or at least um, text-based in English, um, had the benefit of really great content creation and sharing tools for a very long time. So it was easy to create uh, Microsoft Word documents, presentations, um, as long as you could input with a keyboard and a mouse. But as a math teacher, that just wasn't the case for me. So as soon as tablet computers became a reality, um, I was lucky enough to get one from the last school that I worked at, and having a pen in my hand really changed what I was able to do in terms of taking advantage of all of those features um, in a, a field like math where you need to be able to draw symbols and pictures. Um, so I've been just a big fan of that ever since. And I actually still have access to all of the notes that I created to my, for myself back then, um, which has been very helpful for me. Um, so when I came to Williston, um, I begged and pleaded until they handed me a tablet computer, um, which was wonderful for my own teaching. Um, and over the course of my first few years, I actually started having conversations with our technology department about potentially distributing um, tablets to the rest of our faculty and then ultimately all of our students. Um, and we were successful in integrating that uh, a few years ago. So we are currently in our third year of our one-to-one -one Microsoft Surface initiative, which has actually worked out really well. Um, and it's just important to understand the background of what we have available to us on our campus because it changes the way we can use a tool um, like OneNote here. Because we know that all of our students have a pen device. We know that they all have an Office 365 account. Um, we know that they all have Wi-Fi everywhere they go. So that makes us just a little bit special in terms of our ecosystem. 
and it really allows us to take full advantage of the technology. So that's the context that I need to give um, as I start talking. So can you, um, I'm actually going to try to screen share my OneNote, Beth, for a moment, if that's okay. Yeah, sure, let me stop this and see if you can share yours. Let's see if this works. Let's see if this works. All right, is that showing? Hello, thank you. Um, but we're really excited tonight to talk to you about the idea of using OneNote in a blended learning environment. So that's going to be our big picture topic. And if you are. I started you know, in duplicate. Okay. Kim, are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. I still can't see your screen, though. Okay. That's a bummer. That is a bummer. Let's try one more time. Okay. So I have the screen right now. You should hit the present to everyone button. See if that works. Doesn't like you tonight, Kim. Kim, I'm not sure if you're still with us or if we might have actually... Oh, there you are. Hi. My Chrome just crashed. Oh, no. Well, here, um, do you want to walk through that notebook that you shared with me? And then I can go from there. Why don't you go back to the slides? Because I was just going to show a personal example, but we'll, we'll skip that for now. <laughs> okay. You know, you got to love technology sometimes. So I'm going to go back over um, to these, and I'll just play Vanna White tonight, and we'll go from there. Great. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you can advance. All right. Okay, so the things that Beth was talking about, um, using OneNote as an individual, are wonderful. And if you're a teacher who's using OneNote, you start to get some, some interesting ideas about what you might be able to do with OneNote, if only you could share it with your classroom. Um, so for me, once I got to a place where I was working in a one-to-one -one environment where all of my students had a Microsoft account, um, this became you know, a great reality for me. Um, a few years ago, when we first started the one-to-one -one initiative, um, it was very easy and very quick for us to share OneNotes with our students and also for them to share their notebooks with us. Um, so there's, there's a method actually from right within OneNote where you can click on file and share, enter someone's email, and then choose whether or not to give that person editing or just viewing rights. Um, so that was actually the method we used for sharing for a long time, and it's still the method that I use for sharing when I want to collaborate on, one, on a OneNote notebook with someone like Beth, where it's someone external from my community or I don't actually have a classroom set up. Um, so it's really great for sharing with individuals or colleagues, small groups, um, but when you start to share this way with students, it can actually be kind of cumbersome because what you end up finding is that it might be easy for you to share a teacher notebook with a group of students, but you'll quickly learn that it's, it's actually more interesting to have students sh to share their notebooks with you. Um, and if you're a teacher with, you know, 60, 80 students um, in your load, you can end up with just that many notebooks that you're responsible for kind of organizing. Um, so we had we had a, a dream in our hearts and our minds about the day when OneNote might actually make it easier for us to do sharing um, with setting permissions up and organizing our notebooks, and that day has arrived. Um, so what Microsoft released um, early this year, actually, it might have been late last year, um, is a, a feature now of Office, Office 365 called Class Notebooks. And what Class Notebooks does is it actually sets up one notebook with a bunch of different sections or section groups that have some permissions that are already set up for you. So when a class notebook is set up, um, there are sort of three sections that are three different types of sections that are created for you automatically. The first is called the content library. And the content library is a place where only the teacher can edit. So this is a place where, let's say I had a, a worksheet that I wanted to share with my students. I can create a copy of the worksheet in the content library and then ask my students to copy and paste that into their own personal sections of the notebook. The students can't edit this. So this is really just the teacher's place to share content with their students. Um, there's a second section called the collaboration space, which is actually open to anyone who has permission to the notebook. So you can create subgroups within here. Um, everyone has access to every subgroup, but it's a nice place where kids can collaborate. Um, group project work is a nice place, a nice, um, a nice um, workflow that can happen there. 
And then finally, the best part about this, I would say, is that you can have individual student section groups. Um, so here, only the teacher and the specified student can actually edit the work, and the other students can't actually even see that other student sections even exist. So they can't even attempt to mess with other students' work. Um, so this is very exciting because it means that I don't have to ask a student to create a notebook of their own and then share it with me. I can create a section within my, my OneNote and then have Microsoft automatically do the sharing for me. And then I always have access to their work, um, which has been wonderful. And I'll show you a few examples of how we use that in a moment. He can. If, if I can add in, you know, I think, you know, a lot of times we work with folks who might use something like Google Classroom, and they're trying to accomplish a lot of these same ideas using Google Classroom, which pushes out folders and documents. Um, but what's nice, and I know you're going to show us how this works, but you know, with OneNote, you have those same kinds of features, but it's even more centralized. And again, you have that opportunity of being able to type and handwrite and, you know, add files and audio and media all at one time. So for folks who might be watching that are used to a Google platform, in a lot of ways, the OneNote Classroom Creator is very similar to Google Classroom and how it pushes content out and gets content back. So just to add that in there. Thanks. OK, so moving on to the next slide. Um, one thing I wanted to add here is one tool that we, we add to our, I, I wanted to preface some of what you'll see in the next few slides with um, a little plug for Snagit, which is a screen recording tool. Um, this has worked extremely well for us at Williston because what it lets us do is as we're creating notes in class, uh, many of us actually create our notes just straight in OneNote. We project them to the board instead of having, um, instead of actually standing up and writing on the whiteboard, we write on our tablets. And as we're writing and creating our notes in OneNote, they're obviously captured there for our students to see. Um, and then some of our teachers also use Snagit to capture their voice along with the writing that they're doing in OneNote. As Beth said earlier, it is possible to capture audio in our OneNote, and I will touch on that in a little bit. Um, but this actually makes it possible to do work both in OneNote and then in other programs as well. So one of the courses that I teach right now is video game programming and design. And I use Snagit to go back and forth between my OneNote notes and then also what I'm doing in the game design software. So I can create and build my notes, speak all the while, and then flip over to the program that I'm teaching the students how to use um, and show them examples live, um, very similar to the way that you would see tutorials being built on the web. So Snagit is a great tool that can work alongside OneNote to help build um, interactive blended lessons. All right, so let's go to the next slide. All right, so I wanted to talk through, and we will take a look later at how to actually create a classroom notebook, but I wanted to just talk through a little bit about why this is, is so great and how our teachers have really made the most of this tool. Um, so as Beth said earlier, our language teachers, um, you know, they fall into that category of it may not be always super easy for our students who don't have the right keyboard um, to create content in a different language. So while it's definitely possible, you know, for example, to type in French, sometimes it's a little bit harder for our students to author that, especially as they're just learning. So sometimes using a pen to generate that content can actually be quite a bit easier. Um, and then it also is really great for the speaking component. So I'm going to show you actually two slides in a row here um, that are related in the same teacher's classroom. Um, so what you're looking at is actually just a, a page taken out of a OneNote notebook from, it's actually a student's notebook that you see here. Um, which is some homework. So what the teacher has done first here is record herself speaking right into a OneNote page. So the place where you see the little headphones there is actually a recording of the teacher speaking. Um, and this is actually a phone number, a series of numbers that the teacher has spoken. Uh, the student is meant to listen to the recording and then just write down the numbers. So this is a listening exercise where they're listening and then translating the listening into numbers. And then if we go to the next slide, um, this is a place where we're sort of doing the opposite. So the teacher has written uh, a series of numbers and then drew with their pen a little box where the student is meant to insert a recording of him or herself recording um, those numbers in the language. Um, and I've, in speaking to the language department chair during the course of the first few years that we've had this program in place, um, you know, he said that the difference in students' comfortability speaking and doing oral examinations has just skyrocketed and their um, performance there has really improved because they've been practicing so much with OneNote. 
Um, so the students can be a little bit reluctant to um, speak in class or take risks there. But when they know that the recording is really just between them and their teacher and they're practicing it nightly and just very, very frequently, um, that's been a great help to them. All right, we can move on to the next slide. Um, here for us, this is another um, example of a way that our teachers use the pen. Um, graphical organizers are something that you can definitely generate with other tools, but we find that drawing them is actually just more efficient. Um, and because you have an expanding page, you can make them as big or as broad as you need to. Um, so this is just one part of one graphic organizer that our AP statistics teacher created. Um, and she actually has, uh, she also has video of this where she's speaking over the process of creating this graphic organizer. So this is something that could clearly work outside of math um, as well. All right, so those are just a few examples of how some teachers are using this as a way to collaborate with their students to, um, you know, and this is meant to just sort of what your appetite about ways that teachers and students can interact with one another and create this sort of blended environment. You know, we are a boarding school, so we actually have access to our students, our students and faculty have access to one another all day, every day. Um, but we still choose to use web-based tools because we know that creating the content in this way just gives our students another method of access and another way to build community and collaboration. Um, so we still buy into this um, very fully, even though we've got face-to-face -face access almost whenever we want it. Um, so I wanted to make sure that embedded in this uh, video here, I gave just a little bit of an overview on how you would create a class notebook if you're interested in giving it a try. So again, there are two different methods of sharing in OneNote. One is to share direct from one individual to another. In that case, you don't actually need to have your school in an Office 365 environment. Um, so it's still possible to share even if you don't do this. But to get the benefit of having those groups within your OneNote being created with the permissions that you want automatically, you do need to do that. So that's just that's something to potentially pass along to administration um, if you don't have a 365 account for your school yet. Um, so the steps for this are actually quite easy, and I'm, this was the time where I was going to actually share my browser, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to make that work because when I tried a minute ago, it actually killed my browser. So I'll talk through this a little bit, um, and then hopefully Beth will at least be able to show you um, the, the version of the notebook that would have come out because we kind of pre-cooked one before the workshop today so you can see what a class notebook would look like. Um, so the steps are actually quite simple, and it really it's more important to have the reference on how to do it, and it's very easy to find online. Uh, so OneNote actually has a website, OneNote.com, um, and OneNote.com slash class notebook is the place where you go to create and manage your class notebooks. So once they're created, you can still go back, add, remove students, add, remove teachers, and get the link to share with students if they've lost it, um, all from that same website. So there, generally, what you'll do is sign in with your Office 365 account, um, click on Create Class Notebook, and there's just a very simple series of prompts there that you'll follow to set up the notebook, including deciding what the names of the subgroups are for your students. Um, so for example, if you wanted a tab that was called Homework and a tab that was called Class Notes, um, you can set that up at the outset as a teacher. Um, and then at the end, what happens is an email is sent to all of the students who you enter um, on your class list. And then the students then send it through their email to open the class notebook in um, OneDrive.com, which is quite easy. They click on the link and then they're brought, they log in with their Office 365 account and they're connected. Um, if a student has OneNote on their desktop, like our students do, then they can launch it um, from the shared notebook online. And then once it's open on their desktop, they actually don't have to go back to the web and open it ever again, um, unless they close it and aren't able to find it from their shared notebooks within OneNote. So it's nice because this is one place to go to manage all of that. All right, so Beth, what I think that, I think what would make the most sense next is to try to show from your screen the class notebook that I shared with you. Yeah, so I'll switch over, um, and this way too, just to let everyone know kind of how this works, but Kim shared a notebook with me. So right now, you know, I'm in, uh, hopefully, here we go, present, um, present to everyone. Um, so right now, like I'm still in my personal notebook, um, but if I come over here, I have this sample class notebook that Kim had shared with me earlier today. 
And the way I was actually able to find it, you know, I'm on my desktop version right now, but I had just gone to, you know, look under file and then open notebook. And it, I was able to find it from my shared notebooks right there. So it was, you know, pretty easy. And now that I have it open, I can just jump over. And here's the notebook that Kim set up um, for me in our pretend little class. And we can go from there. So Kim, where do you want me to go first? Wait, you're muted, Kim. Sorry. Sorry, this is, the, this is basically the teacher view of a class notebook. Okay. So what you can see is across the top there, you see collaboration space, content library, and then the names of two of the students in my fake class. Um, and so what we've got here is these match up with the uh, different types of permissions that we talked about just a few minutes ago. So if you click on the collaboration space there, Beth, uh, you can see that I just I set up a few pages where perhaps Jen and Beth would be doing some work together. And then if you click on Chris and Chris, you can see that Chris and Chris have done some work on conceptualizing a game together. So this is something that they were able to author together. And again, this is just a space where students and teachers, everyone in the class can edit together. All right, so if we go back up. Okay. We also have the content library. And this here, as I said earlier, is the place where I place all of my notes. This is a place where the students cannot edit, um, but they can copy materials from this place and paste it into their own version, their own section of the notebook. So you can see here that I've given the students a few uh, instructions about how to use the note templates. Um, so if you, for example, just right click on one of those, then you can copy one of those pages and paste it right into um, your own notebook. And you don't actually have to go through without that. But this is uh, basically a repository for the class. And again, the students are not able to edit this. You know, I actually I love the note taking templates too, because it's nice um, just to point folks out. Like I'm seeing KE because this is, you know, Kim set all of this up. So again, much for those that are, you know, maybe used to like that Google environment of wondering, well, who did which part? So I've got those indications. But then, you know, I'm on my my computer right now, so I may not be able to take advantage of a pen input, but if I was to open this exact same note, you know, on my iPad or on a different tablet, I could start working directly in it. So it's great to have these, you know, note-taking templates that I could copy and use as many of them as I need. Great. All right, so if you go back up. Then on the right, we also have two different student tabs. Uh, so as the teacher, I'm able to click into both of those tabs and look at them. But if I was looking at this view as a student, let's say that I was locked in as Jennifer, I would not be able to see Beth's tab. But if we click into Beth's tab right now, we can see that she has three different tabs within her notebook, which are the ones that I specified when I set up the notebook. So when I was creating this notebook through Class Notebook Creator Online, I said that there should be a class note section, a game specification section, and a grades section. Uh, and if you click through each of those, Beth, you can just show a little bit about what each of those contain. So these are really Beth's copies of all of these things. Um, and the, the only people who can see these are me and Beth. And you can see a little bit about what I do with my classes using this tool. So these are my some of my grading rubrics that I use for some of the programming projects in my class. Um, I like to put in little stickers from the internet. <laughs> um, but if you if you click down through those, Beth, you can see that I'm giving a little bit of feedback. I'm providing the score. Um, I've got the students writing to me. I'm writing to the students. Um, so this is really a nice communication tool that we use as well. Oh, I had a very nice job. Excellent. <laughs> very nice. Cool. Great. And if you go back out, Beth, and okay. click into Jen's file, um, what you'll be able to see just briefly is that you've got the same sections. So you've also got class notes, game specifications, and grades. Um, but for Jen, all of that stuff would be what Jen created or what I posted for Jen rather than what we see in Beth's. So everything in Jen's folder will be similar but different from the other students in the class. And Jen and Beth both have the option of creating and organizing other sections within, within this. So I've had other I've had students in the past add another section, um, you know, for 
projects or, or something else that they found useful within the class. And I do have to say that, you know, even though I teach high school students who are generally relatively advanced in their organizational techniques, um, I still really do appreciate the ability to, as their teacher, come in and see how they're organizing themselves and give them prompts for ways that they might organize themselves better with OneNote. Um, so as a, as a relatively new tool to our students, we need a lot of education into how to make the best use of this. Kim, can do you when you set this up with OneNote Classroom Creator, are you also pushing the pages out or just the sections? Just the sections. So that's also a cool thing to know, like who's been taking notes, who hasn't been taking notes. Yes. You know, because Jen here did not take notes on chapter one. So that might be, you know, again, if you were doing that notebook check, that's a nice thing uh, to be able to keep tabs on and say, hey, wait, where are your notes? Absolutely. And we're a school that has a middle school and a high school. So we find that different things obviously are appropriate for different levels. So some of our middle school teachers will actually paste the note templates into the right spot for our students. Um, you know, at the beginning, as they're learning and getting more familiar with the, with the program. And then as they become more expert and we take the training wheels off, then we, you know, will allow the students to start to kind of copy and paste on their own. Um, as they become more sophisticated, but it, it there are a lot, actually lots of different reasons why a teacher might want editing capability for their students' notebooks, and that's a great one, Beth. So, you know, it's possible that Jen might have just been absent for the chapter one terms, and maybe what I'll do is just paste that, paste that page right into her notebook for her. Oh, cool. So, Kim, have you found as well that, um, do you have students that are like taking notes on paper and then taking pictures of those notes and adding them to OneNote, or are you finding that they're mostly going digital? They're mostly just going digital. Okay. We're very lucky because we have a fantastic tech support office, and because we have a standardized device on our campus, um, if something happens to a student surface, they're able to just walk downstairs, swap it out, log in with their Microsoft account to their computer and get all of their files back within, you know, 15 minutes. So our students are rarely ever without their device. So since all of their work is always on the surface, there's rarely a need to go paper. Interesting. Yeah, that we I actually was with a group today and we were having the debate over kids that just really wanted to take notes on paper still if they were comfortable with it and then, you know, could they take pictures of those notes and put it into something else. So it's interesting to hear that, you know, after these three years that your kids have really transfer, uh, like transitioned to an all digital environment. Right. And a lot of the students just find it more convenient. Excellent. Perfect. Um, I know that, you know, personally, I'm always taking like the idea of paper for me is really difficult. because it's like I can't search it and I can't find it. And, you know, again, being able to be all digital and have typing and handwriting in one place has been really valuable, you know, as a student looking at a tool like OneNote. Um, is there is there anything else that you want me to show from here? Um, I think that's good. You know, I would just echo what you said about being able to search your notes and have access to things from the past. As a teacher, um, I remember being an eighth grade algebra teacher and teaching an excellent unit on exponents and having those notes and then being able to draw upon those later when I was a geometry teacher in high school, um, which was really helpful for me. And I, I, I think that if we consider that same idea as a student, um, you know, if you're a calculus student and you remember what you learned about factoring in eighth grade, um, being able to reach back and grab those notes can actually be quite wonderful. Um, so being able to organize yourself and search um, all in one place like this is actually very academically valuable. So one other question, Kim, are you having with you know, with OneNote Classroom Creator, does this basically mean, you know, like if I click right now and look at my notebooks, you know, I have three notebooks, but essentially do your students have a notebook for each class that they're in? Yes, generally they have one notebook for each class. Okay. I wasn't sure if it was somehow like magically merging into one ginormous notebook, but. No, and they only have one, one instance of OneNote running at a time, but they'll see a list of five. With Class Notebook Creator, that's actually new this year because when we were using the old style of sharing, each student would end up usually with two notebooks per class, one that the teacher had shared with them and one that they were sharing with the teacher. Oh, wow. So they would end up with essentially like 10 notebooks that they were juggling? Right. And a teacher might end up with, you know, 100. Oh, wow. 
And now they just, and then, for, so from a teacher standpoint, I'm just repeating back some of this. So like from a teacher standpoint, then they would have like one notebook per class and then everything would be in that one notebook. Exactly. And the way I've organized my work is that I basically have a master copy of a notebook. Um, this is basically my teacher copy of the notebook. And then I replicate that um, for my class notebook each year. Oh, cool. Wow. There's a lot in this. <laughs> So, excellent, thanks. Um, so I'm gonna stop the screen sharing for a minute, but just, I think, you know, I know that personally when I first started looking at this, I just had no idea about all of the features and ways, you know, to look at using this to support students on different levels. And so I think, you know, there is a ton of potential and I thank you for showing us all of these cool things that can really start to change things up and to see how it even can all work together. You know, I keep mentioning that, you know, the Google environment, but again, I, I was thinking about a BYOD situation where, you know, if you are aware there's multiple devices and you've got multiple platforms, it is a really nice way to bring everything together because it does work cross device, cross platform, and you can, you know, I have my own notes where it's like linking to Google Docs and linking to things that are in, you know, Dropbox and like bringing everything together that I might need, um, you know, because I can do that within one place. And so it's nice knowing there's that like centralized home where everything can come back to. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, so for teachers that might just be getting started or schools that are thinking about considering this, do you have any other like advice or input before jumping in or suggestions? I would say play with it um, and go with what works for you and your school and your ecosystem. Uh, Williston started as a window shop. So when we went with Surface Pros and we went um, with Office 365 and we went with OneNote, it's because that's what our teachers knew. That's what they were comfortable with. If we had just changed courses quickly and gone to a separate platform, um, it would have taken a lot longer for us to get where we where we are now. But since we were comfortable with Word and we were comfortable with um, Windows, this actually just made a lot of sense for us. So we started with what we were comfortable with and um, we took baby steps. We played a lot um, and we help each other. Cool. Well, Kim, thank you so much for joining us tonight. It was so nice to be able to have you and to talk about something different and hopefully folks have got, you know, some new ideas. I'm just going to double check the chat one more time and see if there's any outstanding questions from anyone. If there are any, hopefully um, they've been posted. I think I'm just scrolling down. Um, I'm not seeing any questions right now, but you know, again, folks, anyone who's watching the recording later, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out and we will do our best to answer them. But if not, Kim, thank you so much for joining tonight and for sharing your expertise. I know I've learned a ton from you, as always. All right. Thanks, Beth. Thanks for having me. Okay, great. Well, thanks, everybody. And um, I th uh, next week, we've got one last webinar for winter, and then we will announce a totally new lineup for January. So we'll kick off 2016 with some new topics. So thanks, everybody, and have a good night.